Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friend, have a seat. So glad to be here with you and so glad you're here with us. If you've never seen the program before, welcome, welcome. Hope it won't be the last time. And every day I like to give a shout out to those regular viewers. Many of you have been with us for more than a decade and we do appreciate you. And we appreciate the way the Lord brings us some wonderful guests uh, constantly educating us and telling us what's going on in the world, especially when it comes to the kingdom of God. It's a, it's a good thing to know that. Sometimes as a Christian, you kind of think you're all alone and is anything happening out there? I assure you there's a lot happening out there. So uh, just get ready to learn more about what's happening in the kingdom of God because my guest, Linda Pulley Freeman, the author of Inspired for Greater Things, and uh, she's written other books besides this one, but this has got such good stuff in it. And I, uh, I tell my viewers often, because I have been a preacher and a Sunday school teacher and all those good things, there's so many books out there that could help you, uh, you know, when, in preparation for, for your own ministry, and this is one of them. I urge you, and we will be putting up information where you can get this book. Uh, it's just got so many good things that can edify yourself, but greater than that, edify the kingdom of God and uh, bring us along to what his purpose is for our lives. And <clears throat> I'm going to join Stephanie in the kitchen. We're fixing an apple praline bread. Oh my, oh my. And one of the motivations is our audio man, Rich Nation, he loves Apple stuff. <clears throat> and we want to keep him happy because the audio guy can, you know, cut your mic. You wouldn't be able to hear us. So, Rich, you're going to love this one, and I think everybody else will as well. You can watch us make it. And I want to, again, before I join Stephanie, offer you, you better, uh, I don't know how much longer we can offer these, so I uh, urge you to get your order in right away. And this the faith or hope or love bracelet you can see how gorgeous it is and it has one of those words on it faith hope or love and uh, the little cross and uh, it's got all kinds of doodads it's got a little tiny cross here and one here and uh, these have been going out the door quickly and i don't know how much longer we can get them so if you would like to have one just uh, call the number that's on your screen, 1-800-229-0059. That's for your credit card or debit card. We'll get it out to you or write to me at Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And we will get it right out to you. And I've joined Stephanie here, and uh, you got yours on too. I do. Don't you? I do. I love so, it. So it goes with anything. It does. Silver, you go with your blue jeans silver, or if yes. you're dressed up. Like you are going to be dressed, she's going to be the mother of the groom. Mm -hmm. And I have seen a picture of her dress. It's this color right here. And cool. her shoes. I have them on. I have a word for you. <laughs> Don't outclass the bride. I'm oh, afraid you will. Oh, not possible. <clears throat> oh, Jasmine's beautiful. She's, uh, she's going to be the belle of the ball. Oh, when it's all over, we're going to show you pictures of Stephanie just all decked out. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, in my $17 dress. $17 dress? <laughs> your shoes cost more than your dress? Yes. Yeah. Her yeah. shoes were $20. And <clears throat> this is our queen of saving money and coupons and organization. And um, she has a fan club besides. The only person in Christian Television Network that has a fan club. So On Facebook. On Facebook. Fan club. Yeah. Yep. Okay. This okay, is you a have, make it from scratch. Yep, you're going to make the um, pr the sauce. Uh -huh. And you have a quarter cup of brown sugar. This is hot already, so be careful. Oh, okay. And that's a quarter cup of butter. Better okay? watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Let that start to yeah, melt. There you go. And then I have a cup of sour cream and a cup of brown sugar that I'm going to put together. And I am very skillfully spraying the pan. Yes. Because that's what you do best. <clears throat> that's about the extent... <clears throat> Uh, my <clears throat> my printer in my office went south, mm -hmm. and so I got a new one, and Joe was up putting it together for me. He says, now this one has a scanner. Do you want me to show oh, you how dear. to use it? I Say, said, nope, I'll no, just talk to Stephanie. <laughs> not now. That's My two hard eggs. drive is full. Yes, two eggs I'm putting in. Okay. And two teaspoons of So of I'll vanilla. let you girls who know more 
technical things. I am happy to help, you know. Yeah. I told him you don't want to get me confused. Yeah, we're it's good. It's a dangerous thing. Now, this has the Granny Smith apples in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are cut up perfectly. Yes, those are nice and small. But if I were doing it, mm -hmm. I would shred them. Yeah, shred it would be good. It makes such a, uh, such a really a great um, consistency mm -hmm. for something like this. So I just have these ingredients. I'm just getting them all mixed up together. And then I'm going to add two cups of flour. And I'm gonna add um, two teaspoons of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, and a half a teaspoon of salt right in there. You know, I keep, I keep homemade soup all the time at home. Mm -hmm. I, I put it in jars and freeze it. Mm -hmm. And uh, See, you're a freezer cooker and you didn't even know I it. I know. So I made some Saturday and I shredded the potatoes mm. instead of cutting. Oh, yeah. And it really is a better consistency. Yes. And I think it gets more of that starch out. Mm -hmm. Just uh, seemed like it was just a tad thicker mm -hmm. because of that, so. Nice. So I'm just gonna mix up the wet and the dry ingredients here. This is what you call from scratch. Yeah. You got, yeah, you're, you're doing good. You need to boil a little bit. There's, um, <clears throat> No cake mix in that? Nope, this is all from scratch. So it was a cup of sour cream, a cup of brown sugar, two eggs, two teaspoons of vanilla, two teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, and then I'm gonna fold in some eggs and some um, nuts. Okay, this is boiling. What yep, do I do? Just keep stirring just a little bit and turn your heat down a little bit. You don't want it to burn. Yep, and just keep stirring. Look at you, Megan. I'm not gonna get your sister. I'm afraid good. you're gonna splatter that on me. <laughs> <coughs> and I wouldn't look good. Linda looks so cute. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna fold in apples I'd and nuts. I'd be sitting there with, that looks about right. Yep, you're, go you're doing good. Just put it on the, the cool burner there for okay. a second. And, Pardon hello, my right. your way. We're gonna flip that because we're gonna put it in here so we can put the sauce over it. So do All you right. wanna, if you wanna just <clears throat> continue mixing that up. I would be better at this than flipping something. We always give the flipping jobs to Look Stephanie. Look at how beautiful. Yes. Get the vanilla out of the way and let me get the sauce here. Oh, that is a gorgeous. And here comes the praline part. Mmm. This is just good for you right here. Just pour this in here? Yes. Oh, this looks really, mm. really delicious. <laughs> okay. You may not have any cameramen here in about 30 seconds. Well, tell Rich he has to wait till the show's over. The, the, oh my, that is beautiful. Poor Rich though, by the time he gets done, it might, there might, might, uh, might not be any mm -hmm. left. All right. Yeah, uh, so I'm gonna cut it right down the center. Okay. Because I want a centerpiece for us to try. Oh my goodness, that is nice and moist. Oh, ah. look, oh look at, at that. that. I can't believe how tall it is. It's crazy, it's yeah. beautiful. Uh. Mm. That is a moist, that's moist. Mm -hmm. That's a winner. You want this, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. I'll put it up on my fan club page. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stephanie Facebook what? It's Stephanie's fan club. You just gotta oh. look for that. Okay. Yeah. Don't forget to do that. Yeah. However, if you don't go there, if you want this, uh, we'll email it to you. The information's coming up on your screen. It's called Apple Praline Bread. And uh, if you don't have a computer, write to us. We'll send it to you, no, no cost. Be glad to get it out to you. Stay with me. I want you to meet Linda Freeman. You're going to love her. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen. Or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. I'm delighted to welcome and to present to you a new friend, Linda Pulley Freeman. Uh, what a ministry she has, but your background's rather impressive. 
uh, an environmental environmental engineer yes. went to school Stanford yes that's good girl <laughs> <laughs> it was hard work but I enjoyed it I exactly really enjoyed what it. does an environmental engineer do I have this foggy notion but maybe you could clarify it well the portion of environmental engineering that I was working on was cleaning up old sites that the government had done research so from the 1950s on scientific research is done at research uh, centers around the country and over the years we've learned more about what chemicals can do to our world mm -hmm. and so we've started cleaning up those areas that we contaminated really because we didn't know better at the time yeah and I think that a lot of progress has been made there needs to be more but yes it seems like I remember when um, like the Potomac River you couldn't swim in it or mm -hmm. anything it was mm -hmm. bad mm -hmm. and that's true all over the United States so yes God bless the environmental engineers that he sends it's good to work help us take care of our planet yes. uh, you also have a bachelor of science uh, chemical engineering from the University of Michigan yes. what prompted your interest in that well partly I was interested in engineering through my father who was a mechanical engineer and he wanted me to be an electrical engineer but I I that's not my thing but I really loved chemistry and so um, we compromised so I went to school to be an, a chemical engineer first and then I moved into environmental engineering for graduate school mm -hmm. well that is impressive and then God calls you into yes. full-time ministry yes, he did. <clears throat> I've learned though everything I've done has been beneficial to the ministry mm -hmm. he doesn't waste any of our time no, he does not interests or efforts mm -hmm. so uh, you wrote a book called uh, thrive yes can you describe that well the focus of that book uh, really was how to look for ways that you could improve yourself so that you be prepared to do the work that the Lord called you to do and I wrote that after counseling many, many, many young women in my office who were coming to me saying, what should I do with my life? How do I know God's will for my life? Mm -hmm. And I realized there was a common thread through what they were asking and how I was responding. And so I put it into a book. That's an excellent question <clears throat> that those young girls were. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we want to put your website up. We're going to leave it up for the entire uh, program because uh, that's where you can get these books. The book we're going to talk about it's inspired for greater things mm -hmm. and there's a lot of dynamite it's not a real big book but there's a lot of great stuff mm -hmm. in this book I I totally totally recommend it you're an associate at Trinity Church in Miami yes. pastored by my friend Rich Wilkerson yes and that is a great church it really is and uh, you are you're the head of the social service ministry right mm -hmm. it's called a peacemaker family center yes and as I learn more about it, um, it's enormous. How do you, how do you corral all these different, uh, it has different arms, right? Well, it's very interesting that I approached the benevolence ministry. It was originally the benevolence ministry like an engineering project and started with uh, the food bank and then began to layer these different aspects on top of one another. So it wasn't so overwhelming at first. It just grew organically over the years. I've been there 15 years. And okay, that's let's how talk we about some of those layers. Um, so you have a food bank. Yes. And uh, do you have like child placement or anything like that, foster care? No, we work in partnership with a local foster care agency that's faith-based called His House Children's Home. And we partner with them and have mentored many of the young girls that live there and young men that live there. Because I can see a real overlap yes. on those. Yes, yes. Uh, and children of incarcerated parents, that's huge. That, you know, that might be the last on some people's list, but how important. That's Jesus the, talking about the least of these, right? It's a very complex situation that the children live in, having a parent that's incarcerated. Some of the parents, uh, we actually serve children. 30% of the kids that we serve have parents who are in for life in prison. Oh, so they're small children and they get to see their parents through us and through our efforts, but that is gonna be a lifetime work for them to get to know their parent. 
<clears throat> and how do you how do you help the children to settle into a life that is so different than anybody else's life? Partly what we've learned is that telling the truth is the best. Um, talking to the children about helping them process the concept that yes, your mom or your dad made a bad choice and now they're going to have to um, live through the consequences. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to make those same choices. You can make good choices and we're here to help you. So we mentor them through different stages of their life. Uh, it's a seven year program so far. And some of the kids that we've worked with for seven years, they're graduating from high school now. Praise God. Uh, and we work with their caregivers. It might be their grandma, it might be their mom or their aunt, and helping them to raise their, their child. Do they child. bond with their parents at all? Some do. Uh, we've do had they ever children, get to hug them and Yes, touch we have them? a special relationship, a special partnership with Department of uh, Corrections here in Florida that they give us a day to ourselves for our visiting day. We don't go on regular visiting days. Mm -hmm. They give us a, a, a separate day. We get the whole visitor center. We work with uh, 10 prisons across the state. And we're the only ones there. So we may have 20 children to, we've had as many as 50, 60 children at a time visiting with their mom and dad. They, we serve a lunch to them. Wow. They play games. Uh, we have projects and a theme every time. We go quarterly. And yes, they can hug their parents, touch their You're parents. You're giving me goosebumps. It's a really because wonderful program. Because on TV program. you see them talking through a glass. No, they're yeah. up close and personal. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about the meal, just like with you making the cake, there's something so special about sitting down and eating with your parents and just chatting and about your day, how school is going, just being close so to each other. So even though their parents could be in there for life, they yes. still have a relationship yes. as, as good as it could be. Yes. And what we found and what uh, has been shown over and over, the parents' behavior begins to change mm -hmm. because they realize if I become a model citizen here, then I can see my child quarterly. It makes a big switch. We've had parents that they've said, you know, on their folder, danger. And then they're totally turned around by participating in children of inmates. Well, you're a mother too. There's nothing yeah. that impacts us like our children. Exactly. Uh, I think they teach us more than we ever teach them, mm -hmm. probably. If you just tuned in, I'm talking with a great lady here, uh, Linda Pulley Freeman, the author of Inspired for Greater Things, and we want to talk about that book. Uh, but we've got the website up. You can get the book there, but to learn more about this enormous ministry. And you know, Linda, it makes total sense that God would call an engineer to do this. I didn't you need understand that, that at first. Oh, you need that kind of a mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because because of the layers, I would say, yes. of, of ministry. All right, your book, uh, Inspired for Greater Things, the, the first chapter was Be Yourself. Mm -hmm. And that hit me in the face because I married an evangelist and we started traveling, going from church to church. And I was a newlywed, and I said to my dad, I said, I don't know what to do. He said, I said, I don't think they'll accept me. And he said, just go be yourself. Oh. And uh, in this chapter, are you trying to say, just don't constantly try to model yourself after other people, but find that path that God has mm -hmm. for you. That's it's, when you're truly yourself. Yeah, it's really a challenge in our world today because of the influence of media, social media. Mm -hmm. We have images of what we should look like or what we should mm -hmm. act like. But that isn't that doesn't have anything to do with what God has called us to do or who we are mm -hmm. inside. And learning how to just be that person just brings peace to your life. And it'd be great if people could use learn that. Yes. Young. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you talk about the workaholic Americans, and, and we are when you compare us to other nations. South America, they take a little nap. <laughs> yes. And in Great Britain, they stop and have tea. Americans don't stop at all. We just keep going. Um, but also, there's a lot of lazy Americans, too. And so you're, you're, you're kind of dealing with both. In your work, 
uh, I'm sure that you deal with people who have maybe always been taken care of mm -hmm. by the government or something like that. Mm -hmm. And what, how does your effort work to bring them into more self-reliance and responsibility uh, to be a giver instead of uh, a taker when that's all they've known? Well, it hit me so hard. Uh, it, it was got to be 12 years ago. I was driving to the church to open the food bank, and at that time we had a soup kitchen, and I would help cook the meal, serve the meal, put together the bags of food, but I did all that after dropping my kids off at school and making sure everything was together for them. And one day I was driving to the church and I had to go under a bridge. And under a bridge was a group of guys that came every Tuesday and Thursday to eat soup. And they're waving at me, hi, <laughs> Pastor Linda. Hey, what's for lunch? And I thought, uh, I have been up since six o'clock in the morning running around and I pass by you and you're relaxing with your friends. Something clicked and I said, we have to do something different. And that's when we started to really make a shift in peacemakers to say it's not just you receiving, it's you learning how to be self-sufficient and you now can become a blessing in your community. And how did you begin to turn that around? It was tough because we started to um, put in practice some concepts from social work to really urge people mm -hmm. What can you do? Let's look at your circle. Let's look at your support system. What do you already have? What do you already know? And how can you incorporate that into a solution for yourself? And we will walk with you as you find that solution, but we're not going to just spoon feed. And that's the hard part. Feed. It's a lot it's easier really hard. To, to hand it out. And I was thinking particularly of <coughs> children who've grown up in situations mm -hmm. uh, that everything came from one part of the government or another, th that's all they know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's ministries like yours that can start to turn that around. One of the young ladies- I think I was overdosed on the workaholic. <laughs> me too, me too. One of the young ladies who started with us in Children of Inmates when she was about 10 years old, one day she said to my very close friend, Shelly, she said, how can I be like you when I grow up? Because I wanna wear a suit when I grow up. Mm -hmm. And that's when Shelly was able to begin the dialogue with her about mm -hmm. going to college and getting a job. And this summer, she's gonna be um, interning with mm -hmm. us a little bit and learning about the workplace now that she's old. <clears throat> I'm telling you, Linda, you are, you are doing what I call the nitty gritty work of the gospel. That's, that's hard. It's hard what you're doing. And uh, as we talked, so we haven't even talked about all the layers yet, but um, it's just so good to know that you're there and, and you're doing this Thank and you. you're, it's, a, it's a world changing thing. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, one of your, let me remind you again, you need this book because we're not going to be able to scratch the surface. Inspired for Greater Things. Uh, you talk about be willing, being willing to be pruned. And I think most people when they read about being pruned in the Bible, you know, Jesus talks about pruning branches and so forth. But when you really see, like in Northern California, you see these huge grape, grape farms, mm -hmm. grape arbors, and it looks like they've ruined. Yeah. It looks like they've ruined it. And then with just in a few months, it's just loaded with beautiful mm -hmm. leaves and tons of fruit. And mm -hmm. I think people maybe don't understand that is so part of the process of God bringing you to what he wants you to be. Yeah, it's not always the devil <laughs> who's attacking I us. I love you. <laughs> Sometimes it's God saying, you know what, you, you can move up, you can come up a notch in your spiritual growth, but I just need to trim this off. That's and great. I just need to cut this back. Mm -hmm. And it's never pleasant. It's never pleasant. Mm -hmm. It's a hard thing to go through. But being involved in this type of ministry, that's when I've learned that as I'm going through with people, God is also pruning me. I'm not, I'm not above. Yeah, we're not I'm, accepted. I'm, I'm on the same level. I'm moving forward as they're moving forward, but God is pruning something different in my life than he's pruning in theirs. You know, I, I'll bet that when you started out at Stanford, 
you never dreamed <laughs> you would end up in Miami no, I never <laughs> with this kind of a ministry. <laughs> um, you also have a chapter on prayer, and I know the older I get, the more I pray, and wonder why I didn't spend more time praying when I was younger. Can that, that can in any way be overemphasized? I don't think so. It's part of the importance. I don't think so. I think that as we um, release ourselves to God to be pruned and as we share with people as they're going through their life struggle in ministry, that we realize, you know what, I can't do this. What is in me that is anything this person needs for the answer? The only answer comes from Christ. And the only way that I can share that with them is to be in closer communion with him. And the only way I can do that is to spend more time in prayer. <clears throat> and when we do, everything else runs better, mm -hmm. uh, needs less time probably than we allot for it mm -hmm. because he really steps in. I think we've got, uh, I just want to get to one more thing uh, that uh, before we run out of time, you talk about the thriving parent. Yes. And I've always thought, you know, be consistent, get on the same page, mother and dad, and mm -hmm. be consistent. Mm -hmm. Being consistent is tough. Mm -hmm. My husband and I have very different personalities, and depending on what the situation is, he might want to say yes, and I might want to say no. But we found that if we agreed in advance and we let the kids know, here are the boundaries that we're working in, this is where we're going, this is where we'd like you to go, and we're all moving in that direction together and just stay on the same page. It, it just makes a world of difference. The children turn out the best are yes. those <coughs> who's, who's had a, a real consistency mm -hmm. in their home. Wish we had more time to talk about it. Uh, we are running out of time, but I've been talking with uh, Linda Pulley Freeman and that website. I certainly hope that you have written it down. They can contact you through yes, that, Yes, they right? can. Uh, Really, this is one of the best ministries that's ever come through this program. I'm so impressed with it. And to think how God totally prepares you for what you're going to do. Absolutely. Uh, that's consistent all the way through the Bible. A lot of people think Apostle Paul got saved and then he started preaching. Not true. Uh, you have to read about the years it took for God to prepare him. And he's probably doing that for you right now. We are out of time, but please join me next time. Remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers. 